<laughs> All right. Well, welcome, everybody. And uh, I am not Adam. I am Harold Ford, the Employer Solutions Consulting Manager. Uh, thanks for joining me here today. I know we're going to have a lot less focus here because today is Passover. So uh, I am recording the session for everyone else. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, just quick logistics. I think everyone's mentioned it, but uh, make sure to right click and pin me because I do have a presentation. I want to make sure you can see it okay. Um, everyone can hear me all right? Yes, yep. Mr. Ford. Yes. Yes. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. So let's go ahead and share out my screen here. You can see that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Excellent. Are we just stylish there? Oh, yes. That little PowerPoint. Okay. All right, so let's let's go through kind of uh, first in a PowerPoint, what makes me happy, and then I'm going to share with you some other things as well as we go. Uh, first, I, I, I really love where I'm from. I was born and raised in, in Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, for those of you that are not sure how to pronounce it correctly, it's not Lancaster. Uh, it is Lancaster. So mm -hmm. no emphasis on the cast, uh, emphasis on the Lang. And uh, that's how you pronounce it. Um, I was born and raised here. I moved to uh, Philly, outside the Philly area for a number of years with my wife. But when we decided we wanted to start raising children and, and uh, having them grow up, we thought no better place than Lancaster County. So first, I wanted to just share some fun facts about Lancaster County with you. Uh, you might not have known, but at one time, the Lancaster City was the nation's capital. Uh, as a matter of fact, not just one time, one day. Um, in 1777, uh, when the nation, uh, the, the capital was in uh, Philadelphia and our government was a little bit on the run, uh, they, they all migrated uh, shortly to, uh, to Lancaster City and met here for one day. So we can probably say we were the nation's capital. Uh, James Buchanan lived here. He actually also died here. His cemetery is here in Lancaster City. Uh, Lancaster Caramel Company was formed here. Um, you might not know what that is uh, today, uh, but I will share with you that is Hershey's. So Hershey's uh, got its start here in Lancaster County. And also the Fulton Opera House is here. This is the longest standing theater company house in the United States uh, that has been without, uh, without stop since the uh, mid 1800s. So it's the longest running theater company in the country. And of course, what people all know and what Lancaster is famous for is the Amish. Uh, this is actually a picture of an Amish wedding uh, about two weeks ago, right in the heart of coronavirus. Uh, that did not <laughs> stop them at all to meet and, and uh, celebrate uh, together. Uh, I will share with you, they are working around the clock to make um, masks for folks uh, here locally, and they're also now shipping them nationwide. So they are really uh, mobilizing for this uh, COVID-19 crisis as well, and they're doing their part, and, and kudos to them. This is my family. These are the Fords. Uh, myself, my wife, Karen, uh, Ethan, my oldest, and, and Julian, my youngest. The four of us there um, overlooking Susquehanna River, um, in the springtime, we like to go hiking a lot, and, and Susquehanna River is one of our favorite spots. That's a, that's a place called the Pinnacle Rock, where you can essentially sit out on that rock and, and look at the, the vast uh, Susquehanna River there, north and south. It's quite, quite amazing. Um, on the right there, that's us catching a Phillies game up at the top. We had just won that game in extra innings, so that was a lot of fun last year. And then down in the bottom right-hand corner, that's us uh, in Orlando in the new Star Wars Galaxies exhibit. Um, in the fall, we went, uh, got the opportunity to go out there and see that, and that's us inside the Millennium Falcon. So a uh, little bit about my wife, and, and, and that's uh, some wonderful pictures of her and I together. Uh, we spent a lot of time together. My wife is in respiratory care, so uh, she is a manager for the respiratory department for the NICU at Christiana Care Hospital down in Wilmington, Delaware. Um, as you can probably guess, she has been working round the clock. She worked a 12 hour shift yesterday, 12 hour shift on Tuesday, 12 hour shift on Monday. Last Saturday, she worked a 16 hour shift. Um, this Saturday, she works a 16 hour shift. Um, I should also mention that it takes her an hour one way travel to get to the hospital. So in some days, in many cases, she's working 14, 18, 20 hours a day. So she, she's uh, been very lucky 
Um, she's in the NICU and they have really very much tried to segregate the, the babies from the whole COVID crisis down at her hospital. Um, at current, her hospital has about 100, 120 patients that have been diagnosed with COVID. So it's a really sticky situation. Um, so I'm really proud of her and what she does. This is my oldest, Ethan. He turned 16 last year. He's uh, 16 and three quarters right now. Um, at 16 and a half, he got his, his uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, you can get his, your driver's license. So that's him um, in his uh, car, a Subaru Forester that I bequeathed to him. Okay? Uh, unfortunately <laughs> for him, I bequeathed it to him a week before COVID. So he hasn't been doing a lot of driving, but he does have a car um, and he'll be... Uh, very excited uh, in the future to be able to drive around and see his friends and have a little bit of freedom. Um, he's played baseball all of his life and has also been an avid runner. He's on the cross country and the track teams. Um, track over the top right, bottom uh, right there, his, uh, his cross country experience. And he also works at a restaurant in the city. That's that picture of him and I. Uh, that, that is, uh, he is currently unemployed. Uh, they laid off all their workers and uh, closed the restaurant during COVID. Put him to work early. Oh, he started when he was 14. <laughs> so, <laughs> Industrious uh, one. This is, this is my youngest son, Julian. He is 12 going on 30. He is quite the entertainer in the house. Um, he is definitely ready to be a teenager. Um, he is um, very musically uh, gifted. He is also um, theater gifted. He really loves the theater. Uh, bottom right-hand corner, that's him in a lead production of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Um, last year, he was also in Frozen Junior um, in two different productions, both for his school and, and a uh, theater nice. uh, company here in um, Lancaster. And he's about to, we're crossing our fingers and hoping uh, in July, star in Aladdin Jr. as well. So really looking forward to that. But he's just a, a dynamic kid and a lot of fun to be around. These are all of our furry animal friends. Uh, top left-hand corner, that's our kitty cat Baxter. Um, he's a Persian. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, the black brindle is Norman. He's our oldest French bulldog and our, our tan or khaki uh, Clark, uh, or, or his nickname is Sparky. He is named after National Lampoon's Vacation. This is the Ford family at large. Um, on the left-hand side, my entire family. I have a brother and sister that I kind of highlighted on the right-hand side. Super proud of them. Love them very much. Uh, my dad and mom, who are both still very much with us and active, um, they just celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary on Saturday. And while we had a huge party plan, we all got to meet remotely um, on, on, on webcams. And, uh, you know, I, what I thought was going to be a 15, 20 minute meeting um, was two hours worth of just conversations and, and getting back together. And it was just really a, a lot of fun. So miss them dearly and can't wait to see them again. I'm also really uh, happy for my friends. These are two of my longest uh, term friends. Over 30 years, I've shared so many great experiences with my friends, Jim and Tony here. Um, we actually have uh, at the Eagles Stadium, uh, a stone with our names on it. Um, we go to a lot of Eagles games together. We watch every Eagles game together if we're not down there, uh, share a lot of experiences. Last Friday, had a chance to do a, a, a Zoom happy hour, which was a lot of fun as well. I also love Go to Cowboys. garden and cook. Um, bottom right-hand corner outlines a little bit, about a day and a half's worth of my vegetables that came out of my garden last year. Um, we get a ton of vegetables out of the garden. I'm actually this weekend spending most of the weekend redoing my entire garden and getting it ready uh, for this coming year. Um, the stuff that we don't eat, we typically jar or pickle on the left-hand side at the bottom there. That's all the, the pickling that, that I do, all the jars that I do there. Um, I also like to smoke. I smoke a lot of meats. So you can see there wings and ribs in the center on the left-hand side, brisket. Um, I'm smoking uh, a ham for Easter on Sunday and uh, certainly love to cook. I do my own, uh, all my own homemade doughs and, and sauces for homemade pizzas as well. And along with cooking is brewing. I am an avid beer brewer. I brew a lot. Um, I typically brew at least once a month. Um, sometimes I can't keep up on the drinking of the beer, so I, I <laughs> as much as I brew, uh, so I share that out with a lot of my friends and family as well. 
Um, this just highlights some of the, the brewing, and I'll show you uh, my brew equipment here in a little bit. Um, the top left-hand side, the bottles you see there, Bride of Zombie, that actually won a regional competition, won first place. That was a an IPA that I brewed a few years ago and continue to make on an ongoing basis, but that was a first place winner amongst uh, about 150 competitors. So with all that, I am really gonna get tricky here and I'm gonna move to my phone webcam and then to another computer. So let's see how good I am with all this stuff. Uh oh. And I practiced this 20 times, so return to the meeting. Camera. Mike. If you, if you, oh, Dude, your computer. There we go. There we go. Sound good? Sound good. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna travel real quickly through the house. I think I have some people here. We're going to go downstairs. My office is upstairs. I will thank Adam uh, for starting this also because it really uh, motivated me to clean my office. My office is spick up and clean right now, which is great. Uh, I'm going to switch over to my front camera. This is my family here. There's my son, Ethan. Say hi, Ethan. Hi. There's my wife, Karen. Say hello. hello. We got the doggies in tow here playing as well. My wife actually has a day off, which is amazing. She normally doesn't have a lot of days off right now. We're going to head down to the basement here. And look who's waiting for us in the basement, my kitty cat, Baxter. Okay, you take off, Bax. So, Harold, you get the upstairs and you get the basement all for your stuff, huh? Pretty much. Okay, now I I told Adam I was going to share this. He's been begging to see this, so I'm going to share it with all you. One of the things I am a big uh, proponent of too uh, is a, a a beer guy. Um, this is my beer collection. Lots of beers here. I'm never uh, never uh, a loss of beers. If I have friends over, um, probably way too many. Most people collect wine and have a wine cellar. I have a beer cellar. So <laughs> these are my beers. I have a refrigerator for IPAs and other beers that need to be chilled. And uh, this is my bar. And just in case we didn't have enough beer, there's another whole rack over there. No. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So tons that's, and tons that's... and tons. A lot of this stuff you can't buy on the shelves, you can't buy in the stores. I had to go and find it, seek it out. Doesn't it go bad, Harold? The stouts normally no. Stouts, um, the darker beers, which these are all stouts that you're seeing, sours, they don't go bad. IPAs and such, yeah, they do. So they stay in the fridge until I, until I drink them. So party at your house when this is all over. Uh, I think Alex, we lost them. Alex, uh, <laughs> I, I think we lost volume. We can't hear you. Ralph, that was a, a subtle no. <laughs> Ralph has a lot of visits to make. Okay, yeah, Ralph's got the nice bar. Tool. I think we should just all meet up at Ralph's house Ralph, and be so eager to party. You're all welcome. You're all welcome. All right, send me the address. <laughs> Can you hear me? No, no, we can. Yeah. Okay. okay. We got an echo. It's a five gallon uh, mash and boil system. Uh oh. Okay. Oh. This is the new Net at Work theme song. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, we got it. Test it. Test it. Then it happens anyway. I don't know. I had the mic off, so I don't know why it still does that. But anyway, there we go. There's the brew system. And now finally, the last thing I wanted to share with you here today, um, I told you about my, my let me turn the camera off for just a second. I'm going to get a third camera. Bear with me. 
my uh, my son Julian. Hello. Can you see him? Oh. Oh hi. Hello. So my my son Julian about two months ago, but towards the end of the, uh, January. Um, came downstairs and started tinkering with some of my keyboards. I had a couple different keyboards down here, and he started tinkering around and playing. And over a course of a weekend, he just sat down and played and played and played for hours. And he'd never had any experience, never uh, had any lessons, but just had a little bit of a passion to learn on his own how to play keyboard. Um, at the end of that weekend, I said, well, you know, what did you learn? What, what were you tinkering with down there? Is there anything that you could play me? And I was thinking he was going to play like, Baba Black Sheep or something really simple. Um, this is what he shared with me at the end of him just spending a weekend by himself and tinkering on the keyboard. Go ahead, Julian. Nice job. Okay. So I've got, awesome. I've got one last request of him, and uh, this really just goes out to all my netic work uh, team members. You know, we've got certainly it's been a, a tough road for all of us. I know there's a lot of anxiety and stress when it comes to COVID, um, and I'm not sure if you saw or not, uh, but a pretty prominent um, songwriter and sure. singer passed away last Friday, and Julian would like to play and sing. His song for you, kind of our theme as we uh, get through this COVID crisis together. So this is, we're going to end you on the Lean On Me. Go ahead, Julian. Thank you, Harold. Thanks, Julian. Bye-bye, Harold. Thanks, Julian. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.